he can change everything in our lives if we just shout out his name he can move mountains for us and we're going to look at a, I'm going to pray first but we're going to look at a passage this morning that I'm pretty sure we're all familiar with Matthew 6 25 to 34 and, uh, but I'm going to open in prayer. I just feel like we need to open in time. So, Lord, we just pause before you this morning. After praising your name, we pause to clear our hearts, our minds. Lord, that you will just, as it was prayed already, that you would just, the Holy Spirit would move through this place like rain, wind, and fire. That you have your will this morning. Lord, that the words I speak are not of me, but it's through the Spirit. So anoint my lips as I give the word this morning. And Lord, I just pray blessing over the offering and over this whole church, Lord. That you just shower it with your blessings. Just bring it forth, Lord, as we dig into your word this morning. And we just thank you in the name of Jesus. And all his people said, Amen. 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 Yeah, we can't haul horns now, can we? <laughs> mm. So it's a simple, simple phrase this morning. And if you're familiar with the passage that we're going to walk through this morning, the main theme of it is mentioned three times. Do not worry. Hmm. And I think it's very, no matter where we're at in life, we have a tendency to worry. But I think in the days that we're in right now, there's a lot more worry. There's worry about finances. There's worry about, is the virus gonna disappear? Is it, is it ever gonna get a cure? Is it, and one of the words I, that I hear, two words I hear that sort of go through me is the new norm, the new normal. And I think to myself, new normal. My life hasn't really changed. What's new normal? Because I feel that if we're truly invested in Christ, and our lives are fully committed, and we have faith that in one touch, one word. Our normal should have not changed. Because our trust and our faith is in Christ. Not in what's going on in the world. So how did our normal as Christians change if we're still following what the commandments that Jesus gave us. And that leads into do not worry. What are we worried about? Because when we look at I found this old web MD, found it interesting. It says worrying is something we do. It's not good for us. Jesus commands us not to worry, and still, most of us struggle with worry. Now, here's the definition of it. <clears throat> Worrying is feeling uneasy or being overly concerned about a situation or problem. Here is what worrying does. It leaves many of us with a sense of impending 
doom. Unrealistic fear. Worrying gives you more things to worry about. You worry about this, and then something else happens. Worry about that. And before you know it, you're in this unrealistic fear of everything. Worrying gives us more to worry about. It makes us ultra sensitive to the environment and to criticism of others. Have you ever, like, with that, have you ever just been worried about all kinds of things, but everything you're worried about, you're seeing it in different people? You're like, Phew. Look at that person over there. But really, when you point your finger at that person over there, you got three fingers pointing back at yourself. So we really got to think about what is it that's causing it? A large percentage of illnesses are related to worry, anxiety, and stress. 38% of deaths heart related and many of those are related to hypertension, high blood pressure, anxiety. Worrying has been linked to cancer, lung, ailment, accidents, cirrhosis, gastrointestinal illnesses, and suicide. Three quarters of the visits to primary care physicians are stress related. Stress related uh, disorders are stress related. So here's, the, here's, here's a question for you. If we know worry does all that, why do we worry? Why do we put the body, and we're going to get into this deeper, but why do we put our bodies? That Christ, that God gave us, that He created, through all that, if we truly, truly believe that our God is in control, see Matthew twenty-seven six. Chapter 6, verse 27, asks the rhetorical question. Can one of you worry? Yeah. Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? That question is twofold. Worrying can't add to your life. But worrying will subtract. With the stats that we just looked at, worrying will subtract from your life. It will take the, it'll take both your health and your joy. Therefore, there's no sort of, there's, there's really, if we really look at it, let's get real here. There's no shortage of things to worry about. Like I said, is the coronavirus going to go away? Is it getting worse? Is there a, will they ever come up with a vaccine? Will it work? Will the economy come back to life? Recession, will the recession last? Now we're seeing violence, we're seeing riots, we're seeing protests, we're seeing racism of all races, not just black and white, but all races. There's a ton of stuff out there that's going on in our world today that we can sit around and wonder and worry. But that's not to mention all the personal stuff, health issues, relationship issues, fit financial hardships, uh, marriage relations, marital relationships, regrets, unforgiveness. But Jesus tells us simply, do not. 
Matthew 6, 25 says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. What you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and body, more than clothing? We all need to hear the message. Stop worrying. We we all have we all have needs. God knows our needs. Do we believe that today? Give me an amen if you believe that. Do you amen. believe that God knows all your needs? Amen. Do you believe that if you didn't have any food in your in your on a, in your cupboards that God would provide? You know, when I think of that, just that, I think of the seven months that Suzette lived in, Suzette and I lived in our camper before we knew where God wanted us. And after our bills were paid, we had $300, $350 for food, for fuel, and for other personal needs a month for seven months. And I remember that first time when we left Montana and went to, to uh, Washington to see the grandkids up there, on the way home, two RV tires blew. And I'm like, where's that money coming from? Because we had to buy all four. Because the other one were dry rotted in, inside the tread where you couldn't see it. But we, we got them. And we stopped in Montana to visit the grandkids there before heading east. And we just kept praying about it, saying, God, you put us on this adventure, we know that you'll take care of it. And the week we were there in Montana on the res, we had $550 come in to pay for it. Could have worried about it because I'm one that likes things in order. But I've learned over that period of time that God will provide. It doesn't do us any good to worry. What we usually, and here's something that we really got to realize what we really freak out about what we really worry about isn't our needs it's more our wants how am I going to get that new for me how am I going to get that new black stone grill with dual air fryer and a, and a warming basket <laughs> how am I you know it's more our wants that makes us worry more than than our needs. First Timothy 6.6 6 teaches us that godliness with contentment is great gains. Jesus says, do not worry about having enough food or clothing. We all have needs. Put your faith in God. Remember, you can relax knowing God sees our troubles, and he will carry us through. Matthew 6, 9 to 15 says, and you guys know this, so once I started, you guys can join in with me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy, be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors and do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from evil ones for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever it teaches us right there hand it over hand it over Here's, here, 
here's how our culture has taught us. We want now what we need tomorrow. We want now what we need next week. That's not how God's kingdom works. He gives us what we need now, today, so that we can rely on Him tomorrow and the next day and the next day. But that is not how God works. God provides on time, and even, I'm sure all of us have experienced this, sometimes even in the nick of time. We got to live out these words. God, whatever you do, your provisions is perfect. I trust you to do what is right. Can we live by that? Do we all live by that? Do we really fully trust? God will provide what we need every day. And we do we really trust that He will give us what is right for us? Or is it more about we have this little bit of faith, we have this little bit of trust. But I know best because it's my life. I know best because I live where I live and I know my problems and I know what I need. Do I, do we, do we fully grasp the power of the name of Jesus to provide for us? This reminds me of the of the lesson that God taught Israel. Did every day God provided Israel with manna? Did he say to Israel, gather up all the food you can? Because I don't know when I'm gonna come back. Every day manna fell, Israelites picked it up. They ate what they needed for that day. The next day, manna fell. They had what they needed for that day. They didn't stockpile it. Because what happened if they did? Every day, they collected only what they needed for that day. God provided for them one day at a time and they never miss the meal. How many of us ever miss the meal? Never. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Do you worry about where your food's coming from? Probably not. Mm -mm. Especially if you hang out with Bobby and they get truck loads and <laughs> chicken. You can eat chicken every day. <laughs> chicken salad, air fried chicken, fried chicken, barbecue chicken. <laughs> Here's the thing that we need to remember. The cross of Jesus reminds us of God's provision. What we need most is not physical. Look around the world. What we need most is not physical. It's spiritual. We need a spiritual, intimate relationship with Jesus. provided for our 
our souls by having his son die on the cross. Being beaten, spit on, being nailed to the cross, shedding his blood for us, for our souls, for mine, for each and every one of you in here. He provided. And if he could provide for our souls, why can't we trust him with these mortal bodies? Why can't we just trust him to know that we will have something to drink? We will have clothes to wear. He who did not spare his son, his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Romans 8.32 All of us need to hear God's message. Trust me. There is no need to worry. But here's most people's response. I have problems, preacher. I have problems. I have severe problems. You don't even understand half my issues I have. That's the response that most give. The response is, I probably don't understand half your problems. I probably don't understand half your situation. And I probably can't fix it. But have you ever given Jesus Christ the chance to crack it, to have a crack at fixing it? That's the, that's the whole thing. Have we ever given Jesus the opportunity to take a crack at fixing our issues, our worry, our financial issues? Or are we too prideful, too humble, not humble enough to give what we can't lay down because we want to fix it? But instead, we worry about it. A high level of confidence in God is the solution to not worry. Worry happens, we lose our trust in God. It's goodness. It's a pretty bold statement. But see, the truth is, if we're sitting around and we're worrying, we're fretting over all this stuff. Are we really? Do we really have faith in God's goodness? Do we really have faith? Do we really even believe that He can move mountains? Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean on, not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Where it happens, we lose our trust in God. God's goodness. Take your worry. Take your anxiety. Take everything.
peace today. Because see that passage also goes on and says, God feeds the birds, he will feed you too. Look at that passage, look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one hour to his or her life? Matthew 6, 26 to 27. God doesn't overlook a thing. He feeds millions of birds every day. Jesus says, you are more valuable than the birds. The conclusion is that since God feeds the birds, He will feed us. He will feed you. Each of you. Because see, we can't miss this. We don't want to miss God's love for each one of us. Because He died for and when we're worrying, when we're fretting over all kinds of stuff, we forget that we are loved unconditionally. We are loved by a Creator that loves us no matter what. Looking to Jesus. joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God Hebrews 12 2. so why do we worry about clothing consider the lilies of the field how they grow they neither toil nor spin and yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven. Will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith. Matthew 6, 28-30. He can't handle your clothes and your lunch. He created it. He's the master of it all. The danger is not that God will forget about our needs, but that we will forget about our needs. Many of you can relate if you got a million things going on in your head. You usually forget something, right? <laughs> Unless you have it run down on a checklist. <laughs> Just think about this. Think how awesome our God is. We have all we as humans have these all these thoughts going on in our head. We write them down, we check them off, whatever you do. Everybody in there. God knows every one of your needs right now. Imagine what all the things that are going on in heaven. Taking care of millions and millions and millions of his, his creation, his people, his children. See, I think sometimes because we forget things, if we don't write them down, and I think sometimes it, that because of our humanness of forgetting and worrying that we think God will forget about us. I think we think that God will forget about us because he has all these other people to take care of. Why is he going to see Suzette's needs for today? 
when someone over in Kentucky may be having a crisis and he has to focus on that. Because, see, that's how we think. But now we got to go into the realm of the all-amazing, encompassing God, multitasking for Suzette's needs, Bobby's needs, everybody's needs in here. Even though there's a riot going on, there's a crisis going on in Kentucky and in Nebraska and Hawaii and overseas, all this stuff going on, he's functioning at that. Every little thing he's at. She can't grasp that. So we take and put it in our hands. God's too busy. So let me, let me take that. Let me worry about it. Let me fix that. Let me fix it. I'm a good fixer. But God already has it taken care of. But yet, we're sitting around worrying about it. Therefore, do not worry. Say, say, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles will worry. And if you're familiar with this, right above this passage, don't worry, and he talks about material, about being hypocrites, about worshiping money over him, over God. And he's saying here, why, why are you worried about what to drink? What are you going to wear? <laughs> For all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows the needs of all, of all these things. But then Henry puts it in perspective. Verse 33. But seek kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added. He didn't say give it, he said add it. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first his righteousness and all these things will be added. But seek first the kingdom of God. Again, the text says, do not worry. That is what the pagans do. And you are not a pagan. We are children of God. We're not pagans. In scripture, that's what the pagans did. They worry, 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 worry. What are we going to do? Where are we going to go? Where are we going to get this? You are a child of God. And God has promised to provide for you. It is amazing how we can focus on things that don't matter and neglect the most important things in life. We need to learn to choose our battles. Leonard Graham said this, Many of us are hunting mice while the lions are devouring the land. We're hunting that little mice. You ever, you ever have a mouse in the fall that comes in your house and you're like, ah, I just want that little thing out. And as soon as that sees them, she jumps up on the table. <laughs> but today in this world, this time, we are so focused on catching that little mouse. That the lion is destroying everything. Mm. The lion is devouring. We can't be busy working for the Lord if we doubt of the Lord's provisions. The old saying. 
saying is that where God guides, God provides. God has a lot of things He wants us to do, and worry is not one of them. Our priority needs to be not our our physical needs, but our kingdom, kingdom of God, our spiritual needs on on God's righteousness. So here we go. We says three times they said, "Do not worry." We heard, "Trust God, seek His kingdom." God is trustworthy, and we are loved. When trouble comes, and it will, run to Jesus, and don't ever leave. That sounds simple. But how many of us draw closer to Jesus and fall to our knees more when we're all stressed out, worried, full of anxiety? How am I going to pay this bill? How am I going to, what am I going to go? We draw near. But when everything's going well, are we really drawing? How, how near do we draw? That's the ultimate question today. How near do we draw to Jesus every day? Because it says to me, it says this. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will be you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Here we go. If you're carrying a heavy load today and you are worried to death, and you got knots in your stomach because you're so worried. God never intended you to carry that load. Are you ready to set the weight down today? Are you ready to just set that heavy weight, that weight, that burden, that worry? Because it's time to put in your confidence in God's ability to provide what we need. Because it finishes off that passage by saying, don't go looking for trouble. Each day has plenty of its own. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. For the day is its own trouble. Matthew 6, 34. See, Sometimes we look for things to worry about. We bring it on ourselves. We look at the, at the day and we look at our schedule and we're like, oh, how am I going to do it? How am I going to get this all done? How am I going to make it through all this? What if we started off <clears throat> with Jesus? What if we remembered the crucifixion? That Jesus is there and the peace that he brought on earth. Because, see, here's an example. The day after the crucifixion, Jesus' disciples were frightened and worried. Jesus had died, his tomb was empty, and what did the future hold for them? They were scared for their lives. Then, the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of Jesus. Yeah, I read that one wrong. The disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews. Jesus came. Not just picture this. The doors were locked. Jesus came. He stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace. Be with you. 
peace be with you. See, when Jesus is with you, you have peace. It's not that there won't be storms, but there will be peace in the storm. There will be peace in the storms. As I close right here, I want you to remember that we can't really, because of our humanness, we really can't stop worrying. But when worry comes upon you, remember the crucifixion. Remember what Jesus did for each one of us. Put your trust in Him. Because what it really boils down to right now, you either trust Him or you don't. It's that simple. You either trust Him with your life faith that God will move mountains in your life and take care of your every need where you don't. That's for me that's that simple. I either trust them or I don't. If I'm not trusting, if I'm worrying and I'm not trusting God with my life, with where he placed me, struggling this morning. Come up and kneel. Give it to God. We'll take it home with you. As I close in prayer and the last song comes, it's open. And I have, I will be more than glad to pray with anyone that wants prayer. But if you just want to come 
come up and soak and just cry out to God. We remember the crucifixion and the promises that he gives us in scripture that says, do not worry, I got you. I got you. Leave it at the, leave it here this morning. Leave it at the altar this morning. Lord, we just love you. We thank you that with one word, one touch, you can change our lives. We thank you that your word is direct. And that you touch the issues that are going on in the world today that, that have, you have the answers. So Lord, I just pray right now that as your word was spoken, the seeds were planted. Lord, it's up to you to bring the harvest. So Lord, touch the hearts. Lord, may no one leave here today with worry, with a burden. They will leave here set free with the peace that you can only you can give us. So Lord, move on your children this morning. Move on your children this morning, God. Holy Spirit, come. Come on. We give it to you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Come, it's open as we play, as she plays and we sing. Come, lay them down. Don't carry them home.